Hello everybody, welcome back. I am Kenya and today I'm going to show you how to make a double barrel stitch. So when you look at this double barrel from the beginning, it may look kind of hard to you since you've never done it. But if you know how to do it, you know that it actually is kind of simple. For example, as you can see, there are four different colors. There's purple, gold, blue, and white. And you actually need four strings, depending on the colors. So, let's get started. I'm gonna put my camera down and I'm gonna show you the strings and colors that we're gonna use. Okay, so I've got in my four colors. I have blue, white, I have this turquoise or sea foam green, and I have yellow. These are the colors I'm gonna choose but you could obviously choose your own colors. So, my white is gonna be my base, and it's gonna be a little longer than the other pieces. So, when I start to lose the string's length, because while you make the lanyard, it's get longer and longer, I'll still have enough string to complete my piece. First, what you have to do to get started is you have to bend all your pieces in half so you know when or where the middle is because when you make your lanyard, you need to know where the middle is so just in case you're getting a little off course because if you make your lanyard in a random st spot, you have to have an equal amount of string on both sides because you are making the string from both sides of the lanyard. So it's important to bend all your strings in half like this or if you want you could mark them with something that could come off later so when you make your lanyard the thing or mark that you put won't show. As you could see now, all my strings are bended in half. All I did was find a book and I just folded it in half and I just like pressed down with the book really hard until it basically like bended. And also it has to stay bended like this. Like you cannot like, once you bend it, it just like flies out back to normal. You could see, you, you could actually see that little crescent bump. That's how yours have to be, like it has to be obvious. And also like what, when you let it go, like you see it, like you see it show. So after you have all your strings, they're evenly in half. You can see that my white strings are a little longer. It's time for you to start with the next step, which is how to start off your lanyard. So first, you're go what you're gonna do is you're supposed to take your first, your base string, so if you don't know what the base string is for again, it's going to be, for this one is the white string. So the white string for this is the base. You could see the white the most. So you could pick which color you want to be the base for you. Just for me, I prefer white because that's for me like what looks good on the lanyard. So I'm going to use white again because why not. And see how I found the middle. I went from here the end and I worked my way all the way to find it that's how it should be for the rest of your strings so I'm gonna find these here okay I found them see how easy that was I found them already and I'm gonna match them up so I could all see the bumps right next to each other and then I'm gonna start okay and also one more thing, you have to also have the order. Yeah, before I start, I actually want to show you the order. 
Okay. So, you see, you see here, purple is on the outside, blue is on the inside, and this gold is on the other outside area. As you can see, the blue, since it's in the middle, it basically stays in the middle, like you could see it throughout the spiral. So the blue is basically like an inside part. So you could decide what color you want for the inside. And the two outsides don't really matter because like they're both outside. They both will have the same purpose of spiraling over. See, you see them two right here. They just keep spiraling together. So it doesn't matter with these two, but you have to also decide which middle do you want? Like, which piece do you want in the middle? So, for me, I actually want the blue. No, not blue. Okay, I'm going to do yellow. And also, while I make videos, you could also ask for me to do colors. Like, which type of colors you want me to do. Because why not? I'm a nice person. You could just say if you could do a video with a type of colored lanyard. And uh, I guess maybe pick yours. So, let's get started. I have my white string. I have my white string. So first, take white string, hold it, then take other strings, cross over. But you also have an option. If you wanna put a hook beforehand, for example, this one is only hooked onto one string, which is actually a mistake I made because you could actually hook them all to all of the strings. Let me just get a hook real quick that I will use so I could give you an example on if you already have hooks and you're thinking of like hooking it last like I did with this New Year's lanyard. You could see it's only hooked on one string because I made it and then I put the hook. But I actually have a type of hook that I could put before I even start the lanyard because you usually put it on last. So let me just fetch it for you. I am back and this is the type of hook I'm going to use. If you want a hook like this, like if you want this exact hook, I got it on Amazon. So if you are looking for a hook like this, maybe for your lanyards or any other type of craft you're doing, I will leave a description where to get them like on Amazon because Amazon has a lot of stuff on there and you just want a direct link right so I'm just gonna leave a link for it in the bio okay so I am going to put the yellow in the middle I'm gonna show you how it looks It looks like this. This is how you're supposed to start with your strings over your white string, just like this. But then you're gonna use your fingers and you're gonna hold them in place. So, so um, then you should end up like this. This is how your hand's supposed to be. I just basically put it on my finger like this. So after it's like this, what you need 
is to be careful not to move light string but you need to loop it over like this and over like this it's kind of like the box stitch when you're crossing the strings so once you have it like this this is how we start but you're actually gonna leave this so you only flip it once like this but make sure when you flip it this is forward this string is being crossed away from you because if you do it the opposite way it'll just get harder for you to do so when you do it make sure the string you cross is crossing away from you not cro close to you because you could easily mess up so after it's crossed like that you put these strings that are away from you or farther from you for example these right here that are coming to me these are closer to me these are the strings that are farther from me so i'm taking these that are farther be reminded that this this other one on the bottom is not crossed like this it's not only the one on the top is crossed i take these on the top make sure my strings don't get mixed up because i want my string ooh, careful i see my line my dent where i made my half mark so i almost messed up already i take these that are in front and i flip them over just be careful okay here i flip over Now that it's like this, hold it in place. This is one of the most important things. You have to hold it in place because it could easily get messed up if it's not. So this is a good, oop, now I see my halfway mark with my white. And also I have birds, so if you ever hear like any flapping or weird sounds like that, that's them. And I will actually make a video on my other YouTube channel where I will document like about my birds and that YouTube channel is specifically for birds. So, yeah. Okay. So after I get like this, now I flip the bottom one that I did not flip in the beginning. I have to flip it across and make sure my my strings don't get your or your strings don't get crossed or flipped because that will stay as a mistake for your lanyard or the rest of the thing. My strings got flipped, so I'm fixing it. Okay, I am back and I fixed my mistake. Now, finally, we can move on to the next step. How to officially start making our lanyard. So, after it may be difficult to monitor your strings, but now it shall be now easy since we're gonna now tie our strings together. So, first, make sure your strings are not knotted like these. And then we're going to begin. They got knotted again. Great. Now we're going to go to the next step. Just tying the strings. So look closely. I am going to take one of my strings. I'm going to take the top string. Make sure that they're all straight. I'm gonna take that top string, put it to the side, and take the string, that string color that's on the bottom, for example, the blue. The blue is on the top. I'm taking the top one and I'm putting the bottom blue. Lifting it up, 
getting the end, making sure it's not crossed or crisscrossed. And I'm just putting it right next to it on the left side. And do not confuse this, because if you do, it'll be bad for the next strings and everything. It has to be perfect. Same thing with yellow. Put the top one on the side. Take the one on the bottom. Get the end. Go over this white string right next to it and put it under okay hey guys I actually did the last blue one on camera but you just do the same thing and then you just pull it but make sure do not pull too hard because if you do your whole entire thing could come undone and that's not good because then you have to do it again so make sure when you when you are um, tightening it, that you do not tighten it too much because if you do, you could mess it up. Oh yeah, and also I forgot how to, um, I forgot to show you, like I know how to do it, but I forgot to show you how to put this on. But all you do, it's just while you're putting the strings in your hand, you just put all the strings through here and just do what I did. All you have to do is just honestly just do it just with like start it just with this on it. That's all. That yeah, that's basically all. So and yeah, since I actually forgot to show you how to do that, I had I just have a regular one. A regular old boring one. So yeah, I tightened it, and now I'm going to show you how to continue the rest of how to make it, and how to build it so it goes up like this. Beautiful masterpiece. So first what you do after you've gotten your lanyard like this, you're going to kind of like do how you did it to like begin. So you take the piece that's on the right, flip that over. Then what you're doing is you're taking all these pieces, flipping them over. And then actually what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing. And I like to call it seat buckling them. You're clipping them into the bus. So they won't go anywhere. And you do the same thing. You take the first color that you have. Make sure that the top layer goes on the side. Take the bottom layer. Also make sure that the strings don't get mixed up. Because if you mix up the order of the strings, you'll just have a big pile of mess. like Or a big pile of strings. Also, some people called lanyard string gimp. For some reason, I'm just not comfortable with calling it that. It just sounds weird to me. So I just call it lanyard string. So as you can see, I'm doing it. And if you don't understand what I'm doing now, how to, how to, um, like flip it and make it grow because you're basically doing this step over and over and over again and then you start to see it grow so I finished and um, all I'm gonna do is just tighten it Oop, I think I'm gonna mess up no I'm not because I'm amazing okay yeah now I'm gonna pull it, and wow, just look at that pattern. It's like a checkered pattern. And I just make sure it's tight, because if it's very loose, it'll be like all wobbly. For example, I made this little teensy bit loose, and like it's a, it's a little like too flexible. That's why I'm not trying to make that same mistake with this. 
So if you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you how to do it again. Okay. Take string. First pull. Yeah. Okay. Take your string that is on your right. Flip. Then take these strings, put them over, make sure they're straight and not curved or twisted in any way. Then after, take your other side of GIMP or string. What did I call it? GIMP, I said I don't like calling it GIMP. I call it like a string. Okay, yeah, so I flip it. Remember, it's not this one. I'm not flipping this one on this side back, no. This one is staying on this side. I'm getting this. Flipping that over there so it's seat belted or buckled up. Now after, put the top on the left side. Take the bottom, make sure it's straight. Get the end, put it over and under right next to it. Over and under right next to it, just like this. Just like this. This is what we want with this string. Do the same thing with the other strings. Put this string to the left. Put this string, make sure it's straight, get the end. Take the end over under. Pull, make sure it's not crossed. See, I and crossed it. Also, if everything if everything's getting too loose, just tighten this a little teensy bit. So like you get focused and you can hear my bird. They love to just sing to each other, it's very nice. Okay, remember blue, left, Dark blue, not dark blue, it's light blue. <laughs> and on the right side, under, over. Then it should be like this. If you still don't get it, rewatch the step I just showed you. Start with the first one, then go for where it's where I say like, if you don't get it again, I'll do it again for you, that stuff that conversation that I usually just said. Um, so yeah, make sure everything's straight before you tighten it. Everything has to be like straight and perfect if you want your liner to be perfect. So let me just tighten it and show you what I got so far from RD2. Look at this. Look at that. See? The layers are already growing. These are two layers already. And look at that. Look how like thick it is already. And this is the start of your double barrel. Congratulations if you followed me with the steps. You know how to make a double barrel. So all you need to do is just continue the strings Continue um, growing these like I showed you. Like continue doing the same step. Flip, then flip these. Then flip this one on this side. Take the first string left, put the string right next to it. You have to do it over under. Do the same thing with these strings, tighten it. Do the same exact process again, over and over again. Don't change nothing. And once you got it to the length that you want it, I will show you how to close it off. And this time I'm not gonna make a part two like I'm doing for my other video. I'm gonna put them all in one video. 
because my first video how to make a box stitch lanyard I was obviously hoping to make only one but then my video cut and I wasn't able to edit it so I had to make a part two in that part two I'm gonna just show you how to close off a box stitch because the most important thing is when you're making a lanyard is you have to know also how to close it because you don't want all these strings like you don't want all these strings being everywhere see with this box see how I close it off so the strings won't undo and you also have to um, I also cut off all the extra strings that I had so just keep growing it like I taught you or showed you if you don't get it just go back to the step where I show you how to do it and I will pause the video and I will build it up myself and once I get to the length and like show you what it looked like when I'm done I will show you how to close off your lanyard in this one video I will be back with the finished result